there are a lot of drawbacks to smoking and to vaping. Mm-hmm. And the idea was that if we, are manage, we manage to make a machine that can extract cannabis easily at home, like an espresso machine. So basically, any user without any prior knowledge could just put his cannabis in and get an extraction quickly. We will open up a world of, of, of experiences for many, many users. A perfect pairing? Cannabis and coffee share something very important. They're both mind-altering substances. People seek them out with varying degrees of interest, and for those passionate for either, or even both, there's a huge amount to learn, and even more to gain in the pursuit of that knowledge. We speak to Omri Almagor, inventor of Keiko, a cannabis infusion machine to see how far those parallels go, and what the cannabis industry can learn from its coffee counterparts. And welcome to another edition of the Lobster Pot Podcast. I'm Dave Barton, your co-host, joined by Jamie Bontheron. What was the what was the uh, the nicknames you you got from um, the closed caption um, subtitles? There was a yeah, couple of kicking around, wasn't there? Most episode, most recent episode of release, sort of. Uh, uh, lobster bar from MJ Biz. It decided to call me. Uh, it was either Jamie Bun Throne or Jamie Bone Throne. So yeah, we're going with one of those two from now on. That's going to be okay. the new, uh, the new, new nickname. That's it. Yeah. That's cool. It's, it's, it's kind of a wrestler name, and now I'm getting Randy Orton vibes. But uh, that's something else. That's another podcast. But um, today's guest. Um, well, it's quite appropriate because it's uh, morning as we're recording this, and I'm on my coffee. I mean, people have said, is, asked me before on calls, is this a can of Stella Artois? To which I say bit early for that no it is coffee and we have Omri Almagor who is the founder and inventor of a machine called Keiko and a coffee connoisseur and uh, so cannabis and coffee that's uh, that's your bag isn't it Omri tell us more yes yes it is um so I've come from the coffee world I've been uh, a coffee engineer for many years extraction engineer uh, and that's basically been my world for the last 10 years but also been my passion for almost 25 years um, and basically I've been working in the industry at the Dutch company Case van der Vest and an Italian called Faema so really in the heart of the industry mostly on projects related uh, to extraction um, and as for cannabis I've been a medical cannabis user for about 12 years and that was less of a passion and more of a medication. So I did learn to enjoy it very easily. Um, before uh, using it as a medical user, I barely tried it. So maybe five times in my early 20s until I actually started using it as a medical um, solution. And basically living in the coffee world, I started seeing the parallels uh, between the the, the coffee and the cannabis habits and hobbies. So coffee has made the switch into a hobby and into an expertise many, many years ago. So it started out as a very widely used commodity, you know, just you, 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 you ground your coffee, you, you bake it or uh, you boil it in some water. That was the basic coffee um, for hundreds of years. And then it became also a social thing um, something people discuss, enjoy together at home in cafes. Um, if you know the terminology, first wave, second wave, third wave, so there are sociologists uh, analyzing that history of coffee. Um, and then we moved into the third wave, which was kind of interesting, and that was where I came in as a coffee engineer. Third wave is the connoisseur of coffee, so uh, high appreciation of coffee, um, higher technology, better quality, b- both in the production phases, but also in the consumption phases. So all across the chain, things were picking up, getting better. Uh, coffee was becoming a drink that you can actually enjoy on its own without adding sugar, without adding milk. Um, that was kind of the third wave. And I started seeing the parallels also to cannabis, because even if you look at the cannabis history, um, it's the same kind of processes. It's not unique because that's common to every industry that is, uh, uh, you know, is, is passion driven. So like foodies and, and beer makers, um, there's that uh, higher quality that people eventually go for. 
So basically in cannabis, we are now entering something which is like the third wave of coffee, meaning higher appreciation, demanding better quality of, of cannabis. It has a lot to do with uh, legalization. So the fact that you can communicate with the growers, it, it's an open event where people can, you know, raise above the surface and it's not something illegal that you have to, you know, keep hush about. So you can discuss the quality, the, the ways of production and, and the ways of consumption. And that's been, you know, kind of the parallels and, and mm. also being a part of the coffee community. I saw that mm. a lot of people that enjoy specialty coffee, especially in the U.S., are for some percentages, may 80 percent of them are also enjoying cannabis in the evening. So we would go to coffee events and during the day we would just drink shot after shot of espresso or filter. And in the evening it would be just a party with a lot of cannabis and people will have similar discussions, you know, about quality, mm -hmm. about consumption, and, and that's kind of connected the dots for me. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think, again, we talk about consumption. I mean, obviously, coffee, I mean, I guess you can do a variety of things with it. It's best known as, as a beverage. And I think one of the things we always notice about sort of cannabis is that, you know, there's been there's such a stigma still around sort of smoking and by proxy probably vaping and things like that that in order to get more consumers interested in in it as you know its benefits and make them feel a bit more comfortable new methods of consumption are, are kind of essential and you know talk about edibles and beverages i mean we're in the us recently and sort of got to sort of try those for the first time and it is it is well it is a different experience and again that's but again, it, it's that whole, what else can we do with it? And I think that's where your sort of thinking is sort of married up with your expertise, hasn't it? In terms yeah. of the mach machine you put together, which is... So yeah. a, a word about the machine, the kind of... When I was in still in, deep in the coffee industry, there was a research from a university in Spain that tried to make a um, cannabis extraction using a curing machine, so a, a coffee machine. And everyone was talking about it. You know, wow, you can make an extraction with a coffee machine. But if you actually read the research, you see that the results are quite poor. Um, but that kind of got the ball rolling. And I started thinking of what what doesn't work in that situation. I mean, why? Because the instinct is true. If you take an extraction process and you add heat and pressure, you should be able to, to improve on it significantly. Yet yeah, the results were not good. And then I started researching why was they not good? What was the mechanics that was not working? And started fixing all the different elements on the way. So today we have a machine that actually works like an espresso machine, um, but is able to make an extraction of cannabis, which is also a uh, decarboxylated and ready for use. So THCA, CBDA, they both turn into THC or CBD during the extraction. Um, and that was after, you know, figuring out why is the process not working as it should or why are the results so different than coffee. Um, and basically what it allows you, because the thinking behind it was, you know, I, I'm a smoker. Okay, I, I didn't smoke cigarettes before this. I, I'm not smoking joints mostly because I don't like the, the, the handling. I usually smoke a pipe. It's, it's unpleasant. It's unpleasant. It's dirty. Um, you cough afterwards. You need to go out in the cold. You know, smoking is not, it used to be a cool thing, but, but honestly, it's not. Um, it's mostly drawbacks. It's mostly negatives. And this is also why a lot of people have that stigma against smokers. They always mm. smell of weed. Um, there's always those, you know, black fingers. It's a messy process. Yeah. And I think even with cannabis as well, you know, the idea of kind of, igniting something combusting uh, there's a higher temperature it still is more harmful than vaping for example isn't it i think that's i don't know the science but there's a, there's a there's some sort of logic there which i'm sure you probably know more about what um, jamie does there's a lot of there's a lot of problems okay mm -hmm. with smoking uh, it, it is healthier than smoking tobacco probably but there's still a lot of problem if you look at the pipe at mm -hmm. the end of, of of a smoke you would see a lot of black particles you see what's left in the pipe. You don't see what's going in your lungs. So mm. even with smoking joints, those that yuck goes into your lung. Vaping is kind of better because you already extracted the THC and you have it in a cleaner environment and you're basically mm. just putting in fumes. But then there was the PGVG that was added to the mix to make it a, a more smoky and, and look better and feel a bit better. But that's basically glue. 
I mean, you're adding something which is not good for you. And mm-hmm. so there are a lot of drawbacks to smoking and to vaping. Mm-hmm. And the idea was that if we, are manage, we manage to make a machine that can extract cannabis easily at home, like an espresso machine. So basically any user without any prior knowledge could just put his cannabis in and get an extraction quickly. We will open up a world of, of, of experiences for many, many users. Because basically, once you have a water-based extraction, um, you can either just drink it, you know, as a ristretto. The, the amount that we produce is always 15 millimeter, milliliters. It's, it's a fixed amount. Um, one of the principles of the machine, because it's supposed to be, you know, for any users, is to have everything preset. Uh, so you don't have to be an expert, and there's no uh, variation in the quality of the um, of the product, of, of the emulsion that you make. So that's a lot of... Um, mm. lessons that I learned in coffee and I try to implement here. You, you need that predictability. But once you have it in water, you can drink it. It's activated, a ristretto, which you will feel as an edible quite quickly because it's water-based, it's already uh, soluble, um, and you feel it much stronger. So, mm. you know, if you compare edibles to smoking, edibles have other uh, uh, THC deltas that usually don't translate well for smoking. Uh, it's absorbed for the liver. The entire experience is different. It's much longer. But you can also use that liquid in smarter ways to replace smoking, meaning you can drip it. You can just keep that 15 milliliters over a few days and drip it every few hours, just a few drops to keep, you know, a level head. Um, or you can put it in a, a nebulizer. So basically a medical inhaler that just produces um smoke or, or steam i can actually show it to you this is a medical nebulizer um which is doesn't have any batteries but it's a mm. an innocent um device that creates a cloud of whatever liquid you put in um, and then you can inhale it. so may, basically you can take that extract and then inhale it for the day Inhalation means that you get the effect immediately for the lungs. Within a few seconds, you start feeling the effect. And because it's very small doses, it, it goes mm-hmm. through the, the nebulizer, you can microdose it. So every puff okay. of a nebulizer is about a tenth of, of a, a puff of a joint. Uh, so you can take it easy. You can, um, you know, enjoy mm-hmm. it for all the day. And it doesn't have all the bad things that smoking has. There's no smell. There's no, uh, uh, you know, that look of walking around with a joint or a pipe, which doesn't go over well. You know, I'm in Italy, and although everyone smokes a cigarette, they look at you funny if they smell weed, really. Even though CBD is sold everywhere. Any tobacco place, yes, CBD is sold and and common, and people buy it. Still, you are expected to smoke it out of sight. Um, And with, with an inhaler, no one knows what you're doing. I flew with this inhaler. I, I take the no. trains with it. It's a medical inhaler. I, I just kind of like, oh, he needs it. Yeah, it's kind of like everyone's like, oh, that's his medicine. Just, li-, you know, that's fine to the thing. Yeah, because it's, it's, yeah. that machine could be used with mm. a, a, a medicine bot, you know, in a pharmacy. It could be used with other uh, homeopathic medicines like lavender mm. and eucalyptus. So mm-hmm. I, I don't see, you know, the, 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 the guards at, at the airport herring to open up a medical device and i wouldn't advise people to to travel with a large amount of of extracts because you you see how it's happening or go Mm -hmm. with this machine to russia because that can also be bad news (laughs) oh there is Um, that yeah but but still it opens up that possibility and Mm -hmm. uh, and you can enjoy inhaling enjoy that Mm -hmm. intake of, of liquid but for the lungs which is again it's something that only happens with water you can't do it with oil and if you other forms of extraction, you get a very thick oil, uh, which is wonderful because it's it's very concentrated, but it will not go for the nebulizer. It's mm-hmm. just too thick to go for the ultrasonic uh, um, filter. And, and that's basically what the machine is supposed to do. It's, it's supposed mm-hmm. to open up your world of experience um, and, and give you, well, a different, a different user experience, yeah. I think uh, there's, there's something really to be said about making these things accessible. You've gone through the different waves of coffee and it's become more advanced and people have understood more about it and can more 
you know, predictably produce quality. So I have I have a reasonably nice coffee machine downstairs. It's very nice for what I'm I'm used to. It's more than I would ever, you know what I mean? It's it's going to produce much better coffee than I could probably ever taste, if that makes sense. Like it's beyond what I'm capable of unless I spent a lot of time working with it. But the thing that always works is it always makes a good coffee for me. Do you know what I mean? And that's that's yeah. what you have to do when you're creating a consumer device. You have to make it easy and accessible for for people. Um, and I think that's that, that's kind of what this is, and that that's the the start of exposing people to bigger and better ideas and and, and easier ways and more choice. And it only happens as things become more advanced. So as we look at coffee becoming you know, more understood and more well-known and they're becoming a larger and larger kind of passionate community about it. It also means that at the bottom end, the market starts to pick up and they can go for the kind of the easier to access devices, you know, they're immediately made more simple to grab onto. And it's it's great to see kind of something positioned at those sorts of people because there's lots of people in cannabis or who want to try cannabis and don't want to smoke, you know, and they, they, they don't kind of know where to turn. So giving them an option makes a, a lot of sense. Yeah. And I have to say, this is also good for people that still want to smoke. You know, it's, it doesn't have to be a replacement, meaning if you're a heavy cannabis user and you like your smoking, enjoy it. I'm not going to tell you to stop. Yeah, yeah. But if you want to have a, a different experience, a much stronger experience, then really edibles are the way to go. Um, even if you're used to the strain that you're smoking, if you have an edible, it will be a completely different experience. In many places, it's easy to do. I mean, if you live in California, you buy your, yeah. your edible cookies or whatever, it's really not a problem. But in most places in the world, it's still kind of complicated. So you mm -hmm. cannot buy it. You can do a, a, an extraction at home today in your kitchen. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you want to, mm -hmm. I don't know, boil cannabis in, in oil to make brownies, you can do this. But this is a process that most people won't go for. So basically, this machine makes you makes that edible for you very quickly yeah. at home without any uh, um, reliance on the legality of cannabis in your country, of the availability of similar products. Um, but also like coffee, it, it opens up your, your uh, uh, potential to, to enjoy the flavors, the smells, because, you know, th the third wave of coffee or, or the revolution of coffee would not have happened without the machinery that came for it. And uh, there's an espresso machine. Without the espresso machine, people could not enjoy the cafes. It will not go beyond the filter. You know, filter coffee, simple, not very complicated. And the, the espresso machines kind of drove the industry forward. And they did the process of starting very big, very heavy, very industrial until they reached that place that they are either with a capsule at home or fully automatic at home. And they make a beautiful quality. We are doing the same thing, but opposite. So we're starting at the home because we think that's the biggest market uh, and we'll walk away into the industrial uh, uh, world even though industrial extraction machines do exist i mean lab machines exist whatever you buy commercial does come from a lab with an extraction machine only ones that works on hundreds of grams or kilos of yeah. cannabis at a time yeah. i was going to say so in terms of what you can put into the machine are we talking about literally pick a bud off the plant and put it in and is that is it as simple as that when with, with your machine so the machine is not uh, made only for cannabis basically it can handle any uh, herb whether mm -hmm. it's green fresh from the from outside you know from, from just freshly picked or if it's a dried uh, herb even if it's uh, dried mushrooms so the machine can deal with any herb and um, that was the first challenge to to fix when moving from coffee to anything else because coffee has a very specific uh, mechanics to to how it works uh, and other herbs don't have it so the machine can deal with any herb how do you do it you grind your uh, uh, let's say cannabis you put it into the little filter put it in the machine and uh, add the solvent and, and let it go so you close the door and and it runs uh, within a few minutes you have the extraction 15 milliliters fully activated if we're talking about spices uh, you will put uh, uh, vanilla or, or cinnamon and you will have 15 milliliters of very very uh, flavored water and um, that you can then then add to your food your sweets whatever and another thing that we're already using the machine for is for mushrooms so for psychedelic mushrooms um, which is another world that is becoming more legal but still a bit problematic to discuss 
discuss. Um, and in mushrooms, we we can make the comparison with tea. We don't have you know the numbers exact, but we can make the comparison with tea, and we are five times more concentrated. Meaning, mm -hmm. if you put your psilocybin mushroom, you will have a, a next step, which is five five times stronger with from just you know putting it in tea, the boiling it in water. And it also breaks down the sugars that usually cause stomach ache. Mm. You know, if you if you take a mushroom, mushroom, you usually have a bit of a stomach afterwards because we can digest it very well. The process helps with that. And so basically, it's 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 an old tool. It can deal with a lot of different uh, mm -hmm. herbs, and that's also by design because we want to be able to sell it everywhere. If we make a machine that is specifically cannabis and only cannabis, mm -hmm. yeah, we are limited in where we can sell it. Once you can use it in your kitchen for anything, then you can sell it anywhere. So could you foreseeably sort of mix sort of different like spices and herbs with the cannabis and get the flavors all kind of together then so if you wanted to can create your own sort of infusion i mean that would be i don't know i'm getting so when you're talking about that i'm thinking you know psychedelic mushroom soup that would just be amazing yeah <laughs> sorry i'm just thinking off, off the cuff there but um, no no, that, that's really no, no that, that's... you can mix all those different sort of elements together and bring it into one extract and that becomes the basis of well pretty much anything you want to make which again, like you say, puts the power back in the hands of the consumer and goes, okay, right, well, wow, you know, the possibilities are endless then, which is which is amazing. I, I usually mix in some mint. When I make an extraction mm. that is made for the inhaler, I, I put in some fresh mint from outside um, and, and then the entire inhalation has a minty flavor. But only also there's another trend in cannabis which works for our favor, in our favor, and that's the freshness and quality. I mean, cannabis is getting more fresher and higher quality, different terpenes, uh, uh, different flavors, aromas. So this has become something that growers put an emphasis on. It's not just, you know, how much THC, THC can you make? It's also what's the quality of, of, the, of the herb. And that's something which is a bit lost when you smoke it, because when you do smoke it, you, you lose a lot of those uh, aromas because you, they just burn. You still enjoy them, but but usually people enjoy the smell when they open up a bag afterwards mm -hmm. afterwards when it, when they smoke it kind of disappears but when you make an extract you can actually enjoy it like you can enjoy the smell of good tea the flavors mm -hmm. of good tea and um, it doesn't taste like tea if anything it tastes like uh, a herb liquor like uh, unicum or, or, or fenebranca so so like very bitter uh, herb liqueurs with those scents mm -hmm. And the better the cannabis becomes, the better your extraction becomes. If you grow it at home and you have a, a very fresh cannabis, meaning you, you just picked it a few days ago, it's still very wet and, and very full of, of, of moisture, you will have a very good extraction. I mean, even better than dried one from the shop, mm -hmm. because the flower itself is, is still very alive. You know, it has a and lot of offer. And using the machine, it'll still activate the, the THC, if that's what people are looking for. Yes, yeah, so even if it can put in fresh, yeah. So, so in the drying process, you raise the the THC percentage. There is mm -hmm. there is kind of a trade off. I mean, you have a lot more liquids, mm -hmm. and and by definition, a lower percentage of THC because you didn't dry it. But, uh, but still, you have a different flavor, and and it's much more. Um, it's fresh, you know. It feels fresh. It tastes fresh. It's still nice even with dried cannabis, but it's much nicer with fresh cannabis. And I hope that maybe the, the more machines like ours uh, and the more mm -hmm. consumption options that will put freshness into uh, mm -hmm. uh, consideration, the more fresh cannabis we could see, because this mm -hmm. is still something that could appeal to the legal cannabis growers. You know, mm -hmm. they are the ones that can actually move product in an open way. If someday uh, there will be an advantage to selling fresh cannabis, you know, in, in, in nitrogen packaged uh, um, boxes like, like mint and other fresh herbs, then it's something only the legal growers can do. Um, illegal growers, they can't manage a, a cooled, um, you know, delivery system. That's just mm -hmm. not possible. Um, so I hope that trend will grow. It will serve mm -hmm. us specifically, but I think all the users can enjoy it. You know, it's, it's, it's great to hear. I mean, something I think is really interesting is the, the trend between these kind of cannabis and coffee and, and in particular what you've kind of made is that 
everyone almost seems to be you know, you're you're a professional engineer you know but i think at home people are like macgyver you know they'll come up with any kind of machine they can to optimize you know a certain part of the process or to get a particular thing from i'm sure you see it in coffee i mean even the study you mentioned is about a bunch of people trying to extract with a coffee machine like it's not yeah. even designed for it and they're still trying to do it and i think that's it's really interesting that a space that's really kind of focused on hobbyists is all actually about ultimately it's like the spark of kind of innovation isn't it it's those people who are trying things in their kitchens and in their sheds and you know in their spare bedrooms that are the people that are actually creating really cool ideas and new ways of doing things i think that's fascinating yeah and it's the same it is how it is in coffee because um, all the real innovations come for people that love coffee and our first hobbyists then maybe engineers and professionals but first they're coffee lovers and you see that they bring you know the the, the, the revolution um, i don't know companies like decent espresso for example changed the trajectory of home machines and that came from outside the industry and the and the traditional industry doesn't look in these directions i think even in cannabis traditional industry doesn't look in this direction because they are looking at volume more yeah. and, and and also the, at, at, at the raw material itself but in our advantage again the prices of the raw material is is going lower and lower meaning cannabis mm -hmm. becomes more and more cheap because more and more people produce it um, so that's an opportunity yeah. and i think with a lot of kind of uh, particularly sort of in europe looking at sort of germany and, and malta i mean the things are sort of changing but the idea that you know being able to grow domestically is like you know what people are going to be well that's that's what's going you know it's going to be a lot more kind of focus on home grow and giving people something more to do with it that they can control themselves they control the grow they control how they consume it and i think that's again going to be more empowering and help to destigmatize especially if they you know i was going to ask you what just to kind of put you on the spot a little bit what's your kind of yeah. if we had to say top three kind of consumption you know recipes for yourself what's your favorite way to consume you know if we're going to talk about edibles in particular i mean are we talking what, what what's uh what have you and uh, your friends kind of gone, actually, this is really, really nice, you know? Um, so when it comes to, to the extraction that we make, I enjoy mm. the most with uh, either tonic water or a, a bitter orange drink like Hinotto. That's an Italian orange drink. Okay. So I really like the bitter flavors with it. Mm. Um, and, and honestly, I, I'm enjoying it almost every night, meaning, in the evening when the, the kid is asleep i make myself a chaser and and mm -hmm. i have a very deep sleep because i have some good indica at home um, and you know i enjoy it in the evening watching my anime and and drinking my my non-alcoholic drink which is still much more uh, powerful and that's my probably my, my newest passion i'm enjoying the inhaler as i said a lot and also mm -hmm. because i can put in flavors but really because it, it allows me to be everywhere with the cannabis and i need it i mean i i, I the alternative for cannabis uh, in, for in for my life is is you know painkillers which are not a lot of fun um but the traditional way i usually use use a pipe meaning i'm still yeah. a pipe person you know it's a classic and um, it's simple i am a fan of simplicity um, i'm not in the mood to start rolling and, and stuff but when it comes to extraction uh, recipes you know there's no limit and um, the flavor i said it's it's kind of like a, um, a herb liquor so mm. any cocktail that you make similar to those that can implement herb liquors is a lot of fun like guava juice very sweet juices with this thing and because it's water-based it just mixes in i mean if it was oil it would float on the top but yeah it mixes yes in. there's like i mean i'm my favorite cocktail is like a bloody mary now i'm thinking you know get some of the extract and make something called a buddy mary that would be that's my ultimate that that's um yeah i'm gonna figure that out at some point for sure so there we go you heard it here first yeah. so i own the trademark now I've decided so yeah anyway that's uh but no like you say possibilities are endless and you know it's yeah. just fascinating to kind of get that perspective on you know people being able to kind of you know just do what they want for themselves rather than kind of rely on, you know, I mean, it's great that industries, the industry is sort of growing and thriving and, you know, it's opening up in new markets, but ultimately for, you know, the stigma to go away and for people to, you know, for there to be a broader market, people need to be aware and assured of what they're actually doing. And that only really comes, I think, from, you know, trial and error experimenting and having that, the option to do that. So that's yeah. really, really cool. 
Very cool. And it's a lot about simplicity because mm-hmm. you have products today in the market which are nice poser. I mean, you can you can press cannabis to make uh, the oil. You can you can use a, a, an ethanol bath. You have all kinds of products, but the, you have to be almost a professional cannabis user to 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 make yeah. the best out of them. Most of us are not. I mean, like like in coffee, most of us enjoy coffee, but don't want to go into the grinding and into the tamping and into understanding all the mechanics of it. You just want to press a button and enjoy your coffee. So this is what I felt that this world needs because the ability is already there but it's not accessible yeah cool cool no so i mean in terms of the machine where you're at right now and sort of plans for for 2023 and beyond where where do you see uh you know, the um, business so, going for you so the business is going slowly at the moment we are now uh, at uh, the r d phase we're making an alpha version of the machine we have a couple of machines working and doing uh, demos to investors mostly we are mostly now talking to investors and uh, we are building the alpha machine which should implement all the different solutions uh, in one you know box because today the machine is a few uh, different elements uh, and the next phase from that will be working towards uh, the production line. And that means that by 2024, summer of 2024, we hope to have the machine already in the market, meaning already delivered to clients. So in a year and a half or in a year and eight, nine months. Um, and that's the status. The company is quite small. We are three people internally and a few people externally. The idea of the company is not to grow. We don't want to be a big manufacturer of of components. We don't want to be a big manufacturer of machines or of solvents. Um, we want to rely on the local industry, which in Italy is abundant. Really, the mechanical industry in Italy is uh, is very available. And also the expertise in making this kind of machines is very available. The coffee machine is a wonderful setup for us. Um, so we are already working with uh, two manufacturers on setting up the production line and all the, the production uh, uh, procedures, certifications. That's also something you need to have for the product to actually be able to be sold, you know, yeah. uh, CEUL certification, all kinds of things that people usually don't think about when they mm. order something of Amazon. But we have to go through and we are doing it. Um, the idea is to say a small company deal with the product itself, leave the manufacturing to people that are experts in it. And once we are able, you know, once the company is very big, once we are selling hundreds of thousands of machines a year, then we can uh, focus on uh, making everything our own. I mean, setting the production internally yeah. and, and doing everything internally. Uh, we are focused a lot on our um, marketing strategy now, talking to potential um, collaborators in the US and Canada, um, because we see this machine also as a possibility for dispensaries to um, increase their sales, not just, you know, in in other products, meaning not cannabis products, but also cannabis itself, because I think one of the biggest challenges is that they're still facing the illegal market that is not taxed and that is very open and where the prices are still lower. So if dispensaries can offer offer such a product and also bundle it up with their cannabis, it Mm -hmm. creates some kind of uh, loyalty from the customer, which will prefer to go back to the dispensary where he bought the product because he will have a discount and it will be a way for them to keep people close to them. And for us, it will be a way to penetrate new markets without investing too much, you know, in, in local uh, uh, advertising or, or setting up our own um, our own business locally. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, maybe then we're thinking a couple of years time, we might be going to MJ BizCon, heading to Planet 13, the big dispensary there in Vegas. And, you know, maybe we'll have one of these on the shelf and, uh, it would be so cool to see, but uh, no, thank you so much for your time, Omri. It's been a, it's been a pleasure, and thank you very much. And uh, have a great well, have a great weekend ahead, and uh, we will speak to you soon. Thank you, guys. <laughs>